So I don't know about you guys, but when I started color grading, I asked myself, how do you go from this to this just by drawing a shape in curves? Nathan here. So today we're talking about curves and how you can use them in your color grading process to maybe speed things up, do things a little bit faster and get a better understanding of how that can work within your current workflow to do the projects that you want to do. So if you didn't know, I put out two tutorials a week every Monday and Thursday. So if you want more of that, get subscribed for lots more Resolve tutorials. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I'm gonna show today can be done in the free version of Resolve. So we have our clip here all ready to go, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you how the curves work just to start things off. So we're gonna go into our generators and grab grayscale. And just toss that on on the end here. We're then gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna right click and create a new compound clip just so that I can manipulate it. I'm then gonna go into the color page. Now, right off the bat, if we check out our waveform, you can see it goes from dark to light and we see that exactly on our image here. Now, you'll notice that the curves actually kinda of looks like that because it goes from dark over here on the left to light over here on the right. So now, let's say if we click a point on our curve, so I'm just going to left click, and if we push, let's say, up, you can see that movement on our waveform, and you also see it on the actual image itself. And if we move it down, you'll see it move down. So this is interesting. This gives you a lot of control over specific points. So let's say if we want to bump things up here, maybe click a little bit further down, kind of in our gamma area, maybe bring things down a little bit, we can go up and we can really make kind of a roller coaster out of it to get specific control over certain areas and what we want to get brighter and darker. So that's great and we can just reset that. And something we can do if we go into our options, we can then go down to add default anchors and it's going to add these four anchors that give you control over those specific points and you can just adjust them however you want. And if you want to get rid of an anchor, you just right click and boom, that thing is gone. And then we can lift it up and back. If you ever want to go back to the center line, hold in alt on your keyboard and it'll find it. Just get close and that thing sticks on like a magnet right there. And if you want to add in a new anchor along the curve, we're just going to hold in shift and then click and it'll just pop right on there. So you don't have to worry about maybe moving it while you're adding an anchor. So that's all fine and dandy, but how do you use that to correct and grade a clip? Well, let's check it out. So here we have a shot from Problematic's latest music video, and it's shot in Black Magic Raw in a log format, so we get it looking very flat. Well, a way that we can add some contrast to the image is we're just going to add some darkness into our image here. So we're just gonna bring the dark parts darker, and we're gonna bring the light parts lighter. Cool. So you can get some nice roll off if you want, you know, if we want to bump this up a little bit. And we can also go in and make adjustments in kind of our gamma area if we want it a little bit brighter, or a little bit darker. Now, just looking at the image like this, I already have a feeling that it's not balanced. But if we're going to add some saturation in, we can see that it clearly has a green kind of overcast. And you can also see that in the waveform here as green is quite dominant. Now we do have green trees around them and everything, but it still seems quite green dominant. So what we can do is we can actually isolate our channels within curves. So we have everything linked up here, but if I just click that off, now we can select each individual channel. So now we're gonna go into our green channel and what we can do is we can just bring it down a scooch. Just try and bring that down a little scooch in the higher end, in the lower end, and a little bit in the middle here. And it also gives us some fine control. Let's say we notice there's more green in kind of the mid area, then we can definitely bring it down more. Or if it's maybe in the highlights, then we can just impact that specific area and we have very fine control over how we want to impact it. I'm also gonna bring the red down just a scooch just in the higher end there. Yeah, I think that's looking a bit nicer. Okay, great. So now we've gone from this to this. Now it's not a fair comparison because we're starting off with a log image. 
but it gives you a general idea of how we've corrected the image just using our curves. And we're gonna add a new node with Alt S, and now we're gonna create a bit of a look for this piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay within our curves and let's do what's called a cross process. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go with a specific channel. Let's go with my red channel. And I'm going to click on the lower end and on the higher end. I'm then going to go down on my lower end and up on my higher end. Now let's just bring that up a scooch more. Perfect. Now we get this kind of funky look where we're pushing kind of a teal into our shadows and then kind of red into more of our highlights. And it gives us this really funky look, which I can disable and re-enable. And we're just getting that via curves. But let me show you something else that you can do that's really cool. So we're gonna reset this node and let's go for more of a classic teal look. So what we wanna do to start off is we're gonna bring down our red to get that nice teal in there. We then don't want it red all throughout the image. So let's bring it up a little bit. Perfect, that's looking good. Now we want a little bit more green in kind of our highlight area so we can bring that up. And we'll just cap that off right around here so we don't want too much green in our lower end. Okay, so we're definitely getting more of that look. We can bring that down a little bit. Now that's getting us closer to what we want. Personally, I think it's a little extreme, so I'm going to go into my key tab and I'm just gonna bring down my output a little bit. Okay, so that's a little more tasteful. Now we're gonna go back into our curves and you'll notice because of the changes we've done, we've added a decent amount of blue into the darker parts of our image here. Now, if we wanna counteract that and balance out our shadows all in one node, we can literally just go into our blue, bring that up. And now we can kind of just balance out our shadows to keep everything easy peasy all done within the curves. So that's all fine and dandy and it's helped us create kind of a cool look within the colors, but we can do some interesting things within exposure control as well. So I'm gonna add a new node again with Alt S. We're then going to gang everything back up with our little chain here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down into editable splines. So now if I click on an area, let's just click here, you'll see we get this funky kind of spline going on. So I'm just going to reset that and I'm gonna click on top. I'm just gonna bring it down a scooch. And what I wanna do is I wanna get a super nice highlight roll off. I'm just gonna bring that puppy up a bit and maybe let's bring the lower end up and we get kind of this funky look here. So we can do the before and the after. I'm just getting this nice roll off via splines. Now, something else that you can do that's cool, we're going to reset this node. So if you check out this little arrow down here, what this is gonna do is this is gonna make this and this kind of meet in the middle and effectively it's reducing your contrast. So what you can also do is you can go past that point and now you have everything inverted and it kind of reminds me of like predator vision. Not practical in all situations, but inverting your colors is kind of cool, but it also lets you go with more of a lower contrast look. And then let's say you want to do your, your editable splines and then you can bring that highlight roll off up and it gives you kind of a funky look with a lower contrast, which can be really cool if you wanna try and emulate a film look or something with that kind of low contrast, like a Super 8 vibe, it can be really fun for that. So now something else you can do, if we go back to where we kind of created the most of our look with this funky teal look, we can bring down the intensity. Now, if we have everything ganged together, they're all gonna move at once, but if we click this little chain here again, we can kind of, let's say we want to adjust the changes that we made in the red channel, can bring that down and we can boost up the red if we go all the way to the end here. But let's say maybe we adjusted the red a little bit too much and we just want some fine control. We can bring that down a little bit just to have a little less of that red in there. And you can also get into your soft clip control. So I'm just going to delete this node on the end here and let's pop over here. We're gonna regang everything. And I'm just gonna go over this super quickly because it can get fairly in depth, but we can basically, let's say we have these clipped parts of our image over here in the tree. We can bring our high soft up and you see we start to bring that down and just get that nice roll off in that area. So it's not quite as sharp in that area up here and you can see that as I go over with the qualifier, you see that over there on the waveforms there. So as we disable, 
and re-enable, you can see that we're just bringing everything down a little bit and making it a little more uniform. Now you can kind of get carried away with this and you can bring everything way down if you want. So you see the before and the after. You can definitely see a difference and more of a uniformity there. And you can do similar things with the low end of everything. Let's say we wanna bring our low soft up. We can do that and you can see the before and the after. And you kind of get more of that faded kind of black look. So anyway, folks, I hope that helps you understand how to use curves a little bit better and some of the creative things that you can do with them. Now, I'm not saying curves are better than any other exposure control in Resolve. It's just good to know how each one works so that you can, you know, get them all working together and find a workflow that gets the job done for you. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and maybe even get subscribed for lots more videos like this. And well, if you didn't like the video, let me know. It's good to know either way. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.